Come join us as we camp on this peninsula. <laughs> in northern New York lies a six million acre region larger than Yellowstone, Everglades, Glacier, and Grand Canyon National Parks combined, making it the largest publicly protected area in the United States. The Adirondack Park is home to many lakes, mountains, and numerous wild forest areas. Take the journey along with us as we head to the northern section of the park to find what might be the best lakefront campsite you've ever seen. We just got to our favorite lakeside camp spot and this is our first trip with this Kuat pivot rack and that way we were able to bring our bikes with us. I'm going to give you a look at it. I've had this one up single rack for about a year now and just earlier this week I got this second tray and that way we're able to bring two bikes with us and also this past week I found this Kuat pivot version one on marketplace for $90. I did have to buy a new handle but that was it. So how you do it is there's a safety pin and a regular handle. So first I start with a regular handle. Unhooks like that. It's like a toggle latch, I think it's called. And then there's a safety pin right here, just in case that breaks. And then all you have to do is push this big tray out of the way. And now we still have access to the back of the car, which is good for us because we have the kitchen back there. Then you put this safety pin in this corner hole over here. And that way, if you're parked on a hill or if it's windy, this thing won't blow in. We decided to bring the canoe this trip because we've only used it like two or three times this summer. Usually every time we've gone somewhere, we bring the paddle boards and they're just easier to put up here. But Getting this off by yourself really isn't too bad with the roof tent on because you can just kind of slide it off the end. We've been here for about an hour or two now and we set up our camp spot and just hung out and enjoyed the lake and now we are about to go on a bike ride. There's like a snowmobile path over there but right now it's just hard packed gravel so that's our goal and where we hope to end up. As you can see I have my chest mount on and I'm going to try biking with the GoPro. That'll be my first time trying that. Coco, we need to get some kind of trailer so you can come along with us. All right, you ready? Come on in. All right, we'll be back soon, Coco. I cracked all the windows for you. It's really not that warm out at all, so I'm not concerned about Coco getting too hot in the car. And if anyone knows anything about uh, dog bike trailers for bigger sized dogs, uh, please comment them below. I haven't seen ones. The only ones I've seen are for like smaller dogs. My other mountain bike is a full suspension bike and it's smaller and it has knobbier tires. If we cut down the power lines, we would have came out right there. Now we're on pavement again and we're about to cross this bridge. I think I've had this bike since 2011 or 2012. Hey. We're now on the snowmobile trail that runs near the lake. So far, this is a very pretty path, especially with all the colors of the leaves. We're back. The path has a lake view again. This is a very beautiful lake. How's it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, it's going great. We stopped at a spot with a good water view. Kate's over here behind me. And we can see the car from here. So we've got a nice big mountain off to this way. I don't forgot what it is. But then you've that white speck over there is that car on that peninsula. I see a gate up ahead. We just went through the yellow gate and off of the snowmobile trail and now on a real road and we're not sure where it goes. 
You're doing pretty good. We just saw one lady walking down the road, but that's the first person we've seen out in this area so far. You're a speed demon. <laughs> we have to take this main road back to the other connecting road, but we're not on here for too long. This is basically just a video, video of Kate biking. We're back on the same side of the lake as our campsite and we're almost back to the road that leads us down to the lake. Bike ride. Yeah, it was. Look at how awesome the view is here. It's right about sunset. Yeah, so we went around the whole lake. We went up the trail, went that way, and just did a big loop back around. And I'm not sure the mileage on it. We just got back from our bike ride, and we're about to start the fire and hang out, and then we'll make some dinner. I'm gonna try a pumpkin beer I bought from Sloop Brewing. All right, so we're gonna do the first sip and see how I like it. Oh, Coco's going to get to try some. It tastes like pumpkin, but it's not overly pumpkin. So it's an A plus in my book. It's quite the nice campsite. Yeah, it is. We just walked down to feel the water temperature. And Coco had a drink. How is it? It's pretty cold. I don't think we're going to end up jumping in. We had talked about it, but I don't think it's going to happen. We brought our firewood and our trash roux again, and I think it's time to start a fire. We just enjoyed the sunset and I got some wood chopped up, so here we go. I just can't get over how great having a 180 degree view of the lake is. Especially with this sun. It's gonna feel cold tonight because it's gonna be perfectly clear. Tonight for dinner, we're going to be having cheeseburgers with a salad with cut up apples and some balsamic dressing. Hey Coco. We're also going to be having those sweet potato fries. Basically just a sweet potato that we cut up into strips and put this roasted garlic and herb seasoning on. We just cut up the apple and now Kate's adding the burgers to the pan. It looks like it's still a little too soon to flip the burgers, but they look good to me. Dinner is done and it looks really good. Are you happy with how dinner turned out? Yeah, it turned out good. Yeah. <coughs> we just finished dinner and now I'm cleaning up the pots and pans and the one we cooked burgers on, I'm having to boil water in again to get the meat off of it. Tonight we're gonna be making s'mores and for the chocolate, we're gonna be using this Reese's peanut butter bar. Seems like no matter what we do, this fire doesn't want to catch. I think the wood was recently cut down and it's still semi-wet. I don't think it's going so well. The fire keeps dying down no matter how much I like put on or how much I blow on it. Do you think you're going to have a some more? Maybe if yours ends up cooking and turns out. <laughs> yeah, it's not really cooking. I guess it is a little bit. Coco's behind us barking because she wants a graham cracker. Coco can smell that the graham crackers are on the table and won't stop bothering us for some. No, baby. Right as I was about to take the marshmallows off the fire, they started on fire. So now this is what I'm left with. Let us know what you think of your s'more. Okay, I will. Just as good as any regular s'more. I think if you like peanut butter, it will help. But I think if you don't like peanut butter, you won't like it. But it's still a good s'more. All right, we're finally getting somewhere with the fire. I just put all the wood that we had collected, the little branches and stuff, on the fire. And it's going a lot better now. Hey, just checking in. Kate's already up in the tent. I just brushed my teeth and the fire is going out and we have no more wood left. Coco's in bed and I just changed and now I'm about to head up into the tent with Kate and we'll check in in the morning. Hey, good morning. This wasn't my best night of sleep in the roof tent. 
I feel like I slept better last weekend when we were at the Betty Brook. The creek just helps you get to sleep, but you can't beat this view. Look at this. Coco, are you excited because the loons are getting closer? The loons I showed you a little earlier are getting a little closer to us. Having running water of some kind when you go camping is really nice. Um, building this little five gallon uh, jerry can thing with a pump in it is really not that hard. This other YouTube couple called Wanderlust Overland did a video and it's very simple on how you make it and I'll post a link to that video below. It's turned into a really nice day. It's around 10 a.m. and we're gonna use the hammock for the first time this year. We've left this in the car all season and we haven't used it yet, which is pretty funny. So we're gonna set it up between these two trees. Yeah, hopefully it'll reach. You'll have a nice sunny water view. Here you go. The last time we actually used this hammock, was in May when we went canoe camping on at the Indian Lake Islands campground. Jump. <laughs> Coco, sit normally. <laughs> I just got my blanket out of the car and now I'm gonna go sit in the chair and edit last weekend's video for a little bit when we went fall camping near the creek. And I just figured out another cool feature with this bike rack is that you can use this thing as a step and it helps you get up to this ladder. So kind of works out even better. The one downside to this bike rack is that it's kind of rusty right there, but it's just on the surface. So hopefully I'll get the chance to paint it over this winter as a little project. Regardless of the little rust, this is, this is great being able to bring the bikes with us and swing them out of the way. This is the first version of the bike rack and the second version people like if they live in a van because it gives you the ability to swing this whole tray out 30 degrees more. And that way if you have two, you know, van doors, you can open them up completely still. Well, the one downside to this spot is when it gets really windy, you're very exposed and kind of surrounded by the lake. So the wind just comes off the water and really gets you. The sun is back out now, but it was away for a little bit and it's cold when there's no sun. So Kate and Coco got in the car. Kate's been reading in here because it's warmer. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot warmer in here. It's yeah, it's nice chilly. now that the sun's out, but it's still very windy. Yeah. On the way here yesterday, we found another site at a different lake and it's a little bit more secluded. And there is a tiny general store down the road that we biked past the other day that's got self pay firewood. And we did use up all of our firewood, so there's a slight chance that we might move to that other site since it's more out of the wind, but we'll see. We're not going to move yet. I think it was like 11.45 when I told you guys that it was really windy and that we were considering moving. And now it's 12.30 and we've decided that if the wind doesn't die down by 1 o'clock, we're going to go back to that other site on that other little pond. Coco just saw a chipmunk, started chasing after it, and then when I told her no, it came back, so I'm going to give her a piece of pepperoni to reward her. It's a good job, Coco. It's about 1.30, the wind hasn't let up at all, so I just took down the little lights, and we are going to move sites. Getting the canoe up there is definitely the hardest part of this whole setup, but it works. This is the last piece that we're going to move. You can see there's this little narrow thing you have to drive down to get to the campsite so you really couldn't bring a camper in here. We are in two-wheel drive though so it's not that steep but if it was wet and you had bad tires I can see you having a problem. We're checking out another site on the same lake and we're driving down some power line trails to get there. We just left the power line trail and now we're pulling into the next campsite. You can see the lake is on our right and we're kind of tucked into this little corner. There's a nice fire ring right near the water. I need some time to 
and the wind is still blowing right into us. So I think we're going to move on to that other site we passed the other day on our way here. It's quite the view. You can see the lake and the campsite over here we just pulled out of. We are over at the other site that we started at yesterday now. We're going to take the boat off the car and hopefully get some paddling done. There are some kids here from a local college nearby that also have their canoes here, but I think they're headed out because three of the boats were already loaded on their car. They have the same kind of canoe as us. Yeah, there you go. Nice. We're finally at the camping section of where we had pulled in earlier. So we've got the nice firing here and we're still surrounded by water, but we've got this big mound behind us. So the road is over there and we do have our own privy or outhouse, whatever you want to call it at this site. Coke, you're going to show them the walkway to the outhouse? It's really not that far away from the campsite, but just far enough away where you don't have to smell it. The view from up here is great. Definitely not as windy here as it was at the other spot. Now, for lunch, we are going to make pan-fried chicken sandwiches. Coco's job is to watch the chicken cooking, but I don't think she's doing much work. And the chicken is now done. And you've got the sandwich preparations ready? Yep. Cool, it looks good. And then we're gonna warm it up. These look really good. We just reheated them on the pan to get the bread a little crispy. We just finished our sandwiches and cleaned up all the dishes. And now I'm gonna get the bikes off and ready for a bike ride. And we're gonna do the same loop we did yesterday. I'm not gonna film as much today, but if we do anything different, I'll film that. Bye Coco, we'll miss you. Kate's up at the road, but I decided to bike back down to where we stayed at last night to see if anyone was here and it's empty. And it's still very windy. got back from our bike ride it was 7.2 miles I believe so that was around the lake total all around the snowmobile trail the sun's out we're about to feed Coco and hang out for a little bit but then I think we're gonna take the canoe out and paddle around this little area just because it's so nice and so calm Coco you have quite the nice view tonight with dinner Instead of canoeing right now, Josh decided he's gonna start the fire first, so that way we get it going. We got some new wood today, so hopefully this burns better than our wood yesterday. Yeah, we bought some kindling wood and a package of regular hardwood, so hopefully the, uh, the fire stays burning easier than it did yesterday. It's about 5.50, we got the fire going and the lights put up, and now Coco and I are gonna head out in the canoe. And now we're off. I just flew the drone up again and it got kind of windy so we kind of got blown around in the canoe since I can't really fly the drone and the paddle. But as you can see this site is also really nice and we're surrounded by water but we're not as out in the open because there's more trees right around us. Coco do you want to go under that bridge up there into the other pond? No? It looks like we'll fit. Do you think it's weird Coco? It's very calm and nice over here. We just heard a gunshot off in the distance and now Coco's a little scared, so I think I want to head back. That's a cool view of the car and the lights from here. You got this, Coco. Good girl. We cleaned up and we got changed into our warmer pajama clothes after canoeing. Josh and Coco canoed while I worked on the fire. Now we're just going to have some 
cheese and cucumbers and hummus for dinner because we ate lunch at a really weird time. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's getting windy again. It's still not as bad as the other site though, so we are still happy that we had moved. This is one of my favorite little things. It's called a pocket bellow, and it's basically a car antenna. Not really, but that's what it looks like. It telescopes, it's metal, and it helps you blow into the fire so you don't have to get as close. And that's it. That's the last of our wood. We just put everything away. Kate's taking down the last strand of lights, and then I think we're gonna head up in the tent. All right, Coco, it's right about nine o'clock. We're going to bed. Bye. Hey, good morning everyone. It's Sunday morning. Coco and I decided to go on a little canoe paddle. Kate's still back there at the campsite. I don't know if you can see it from here. She's trying to finish her book that she started last week. There's still some color towards the top of the trees up here. It also looks like straight up ahead around this corner, there's a little corner of the house. When Coco needs attention or is feeling lonely, she climbs into my section and sometimes even tries to jump on top of me. Oh, here you go. Coco, what are you doing? I think we're going to hang out here for a little bit and then pack up our stuff and head home. So thank you again for watching. I know the fall colors weren't as good this weekend as they were last weekend, but we still had a fun time.